to yet another edition of the Sherma Show. With us today is no other person than Mr. Adam George, the founder and CEO of 48 Spices, a kitchen joiner that you must visit and must tell you. People have been conversing on what they have tasted at this kitchen joint. Join them. Welcome to the Share My Show. Thank you. Thank you very so much. It's really a pleasure having you here. Same here. The pleasure is mine too. So tell me a little bit about um, Atem George before 48 Spices. That's an interesting question. <laughs> when I left school or before leaving school, I always assist my mom in the kitchen. So I just nurtured that belief that I could do something. And she always tells me this, son, whenever you're privileged to learn anything, just do it, even for nothing. I used to go to the farm, we come out, try to cook together. I used to go out, I even assist people to be like the butcher, slaughter me, sell me, then at the end, give me some reward. So with that, my brain started thinking. It twinkled me in the night that, hey, I can do something great. Why waiting for the government? Or why waiting to be employed? And that's how 48 started. It took off from there. Wow. So, but why the name 48 Spices? <laughs> <laughs> the name is very intriguing in itself, you know. For sure. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> you see, I had some funny customers. When they come to me, they eat, they say, oh, the food was so delicious. Okay. It's like 15 spices. I said, why 15 spices? Why are you limiting me? Another customer will come maybe from Duala in your window and say, hey, you said it's just 15? It should be 30. Oh my God. And I had one one guy around my locality, mm -hmm. Lemon. He used to eat there like this. Oh so God. people were saying 20, 30, 40. I don't know. I was just inspired. One day I said, it's 48. <laughs> There's no spices that can be above 48. And I was put one day with a question that can you name them? <laughs> That's the secret of every kitchen. You can name. You can give the basic like garlic, ginger, water, salt, and maggi. So you cannot name because it's like you're selling all your business. Mm. So it was just like the taste of customers kept on rising. Mm. One we see is 10, one said 50, one said 50, one said 60, but we said so at 48. Wow. That's how the name started. <laughs> yeah, because when you mentioned Raymond, I remember actually reading. So there's this post that somebody wrote on the Invest in Africa, they wrote about um, 48 um, spices. And Raymond came and said, please, you need to actually give me credit. I'm just paraphrasing. You need to give me credit for helping you to come up with this thing. So, <laughs> it's just one guy that was in the process that went cost for my account. Oh, wow. Some says 18, some said 20, 30, 40. But we said to 48, oh, wow. and I bet you. That name is so unique and nice. <laughs> it has great waves. Wow, that's interesting. For sure. So, but just imagine this, that you've been in business now for over 13 years. What has been the secret? That's an interesting question. You know, it's only challenges. Mm -hmm. The challenges are bound to be there because as a businessman, there are times that you face it. Mm -hmm. Let me just give two examples. You could be buying your house in Goya, maybe at 4,000, 4, mm -hmm. It comes a people with a scarcity. You move to Dwala, the cost has already increased. Yeah. You move to Lime to get those beds. And now, how do you situate the business? Are you going to add the cost on customers by increasing the prices? No. The first thing about business, it goes with honesty and quality. So I did not. There are times that with Boya, you know, electrical problem, yeah. electrical supply, power is always a problem. You keep your you you try to spice your chicken, you spice your pork and keep it in the fridge before you discover there's no light for four days. Are you going to sell those things for customers? Obviously, no. You have to trash them. Those are the challenges that I faced. But it's always a way forward. You know, when you're honest with business, you always have a way in doing those things. When it happened, I realized that I would take it all over with a positive stand, a smiling face. And I'll tell my customer, can you imagine that there was no light and I faced these challenges? Some of them are too honest. Before leaving, they give you a tips of about 10, 15 pounds. Wow. Within two months, you discover that the things that you got lost has already been replenished. Oh so you just keep on. Then there's another there's another issue also. Mm -hmm. Workers. You know, some of them are really committed. We see the type of customers. And we come on setting. I don't know that it's all over the world. They'll come and talk into their ear in code. Please, how much is church giving you? That's good now. Why not leave? You see, she start here, she starts behaving funny. Mm -hmm. But us, 
somebody who has gone through all those, I will see them now. Whatever you believe in, even if you go to B or C or D, the same attitude will be. Mm-hmm. Just do your best. Just do your best. Let the Lord do the rest. Mm-hmm. It will not be easy. Yeah. Another one is the aspect of the capital. Mm-hmm. You know, as a young guy, it's always difficult to have money to fulfill your vision. My vision was like, maybe in 20 years, I can employ about 2,000 Cameroonians. Okay. Is it only that chicken and pork and goat and fish that you'll be doing that you employ a number of people? The answer will be no. Mm. So what did you, and how were you? I thought of a poultry. I thought of a piggery. If I can have space, I construct maybe a poultry that can take about 200 or 3,000 birds. Mm. And a piggery that can have about 100 pigs automatically you can employ more than 100 people. And if that would happen, then 48 would be small. It means you need branches. Yeah. It means you need a branch in Douala. You need a branch maybe in Yaoundé. So as to fit the population. Mm. That was my vision. Wow. So but how far would that go? Ah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. Yeah, talking on that, you see, we have always been in Yaoundé okay. for several occasions, like that the parties, and people call us like wedding, mm-hmm. we did barbecue there, even in Douala, we have more than five places, mm-hmm. Limbe, all over. Just that alone has returned me the capital that hopefully in two years' time I'll have a very big orchard. Okay. And I believe my dream will come true. Mm-hmm. So right now that you've not yet had this, I'm kind of, you know, successfully, you've not yet established this poetry. So where have you been getting your finances? Uh-huh. Right, to sustain the business over those years. Because the reason why I ask this is because, you know, when you talk to most entrepreneurs, the first challenge that they always put on the table, finances. We don't have money. We need money. That's why they're not doing great things. That's the best question you've asked so far. <laughs> the truth is, any business need money. But how do you go about it? There's this daily saving that they call in code Akahu. I always lay my plans or my objective for a day, a day before a week. That today I will save 3,000. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, maybe four or five. Weekends, when you have cost, madam, I have lived here only in Ambulanka. I know I can save five and eight and 10,000. Mm-hmm. So at the end, I realized that each month I could raise something like 50. <laughs> Let's be sincere, you You know, when they have 50,000, they will think about joints to go and join that money. But I always think a way out, how to increase. So I kept on working my brain. Mm-hmm. I even move on my status to advertise what I have. Mm-hmm. Please, this week will be different. There will be roast fish. Maybe there will be great gold. So you see, I, I was always in that changing mood. And I could raise the capital that I needed. After the Akaho, maybe after two years, I went there and they gave me loan. A loan that is realistic. I will not go and take loan like 10 million. For a small business like that, I means I'm out of place. I'll take a loan of about one million. Hopefully, before the year runs out, I will pay back the loan. So, capital is an issue, but if you're determined, it's not an issue. You must begin from a humble beginning before you reach there. I like the fact that you talked about actually taking small loans and paying that because, you know, there are times I say that small businesses actually forget that you being able to take a loan and even pay back actually shows that, it's, that you're doing something. It shows how serious you are and also it builds trust. So I really kind of like like that approach. Thank you. Yeah, Thank honestly, you. I'm really Thank impressed you. with that. So when you're talking, right, even about saving, I was just wondering, then how did you actually survive this crisis that have been in recent times? Because this has actually mean you staying home, right? People actually staying home, be the COVID, COVID-19 pandemic that hit us all the anglophone crisis, right? So how did you survive? That's an important question because the United Nations talks about some measures to be used. Mm-hmm. Distance, about one meter, but we kept five meters. <laughs> and then the public said, we're always on call. Okay. You can place your other two calls. Okay, well. And when you come, they just pick it up. We created a box. Yeah, you just come and pay your money, you pick it up, they'll have a the sanitizer. Mm-hmm. You sanitize your hands, you wash them, you get your food, you go. But it's not only COVID alone, the crisis too. Exactly. And there was no money. We face a lot of difficulties. At times, we normally have food from Bamenda, like the Bamenda tomatoes, mm. the spices that is very good. We could no longer have them. So, how then do we cope with it? Yeah. 
we had to use the one from Buya. Some people said that things have changed, that we have dropped. And I explained to them, I'm very honest in business. Mm. Due to the crisis, we can no longer have those spices from Bermuda. We can no longer have those tomatoes from Bermuda. Mm. We can manage one from Buya. So you see, because of my honesty in business, most of my customers like work. This the rich joint, mm. and we should stay with him. Mm. <laughs> More with Mr. Adam George after the break. <laughs> Now I want to put myself in the seat of the customer, okay? Yeah. So, you know, I've been talking about um, most times the, the beautiful things that you've been doing. But there are some concerns that maybe customers have that I just want to bring it to your attention. But I know maybe you already heard them, okay? But I will still just want you to address them because maybe yeah. it's essential for us to learn from how you're planning to maybe handle that value. So some customers say that when they actually come to 48 Spices Kitchen Drink, right? What happens is that when they serve them food, it takes too long for the food to come. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, <laughs> and that's, how we like to find it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a pertinent issue. It's not only themselves mm. that they sat for a long period of time. Mm. The first thing is some of them always agitated mm. that they have been sitting for close to 20, 30 minutes and somebody just come and it's being served. Mm. 48 spices has a number that you need to call them. There are many numbers. For example, we have the six seven seven one six one five seven one. We have the six seven seven nine eight nine 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 three. There are many, also of many orders that we even give as a program of food. When you place your order, it means you are creating space, and when you come, they will serve you a meeting. But honestly, some customer come there and listen for long. Like you give them thirty minutes. By 20 minutes, at times you set them. Mm. At times, some of them are angry. No, a hungry man is an angry man. <laughs> if you give them that 20 minutes, not you up to 20 minutes, just five minutes, they're already making noise. Yeah. I don't blame them. Mm. It's a normal phenomenon in life. Okay. So I always move on and talk to the whole sensitize them. That they don't even need to stress. At times, they can use this number. They do door to door services. Mm. At times, we are human, we could have breakdowns. Mm. I cannot serve chicken that is not 100% fit for consumption. If I anticipate, 20 and 50 minutes, it's not ready. I'll add five. Mm. Even five is not ready, I'll add five. That's 25 minutes. Mm. And after that, they'll be served. My objective is to serve them fresh and hot food. Mm. We're doing a chicken joint or pork joint. Mm. Their food needs to be served at a, a temperature that is good for consumption. So, but do you think that there's something that can be done that is better? The reason why I say this is because okay, I've been in Vietnam. Yeah. When you go to Vietnam, to be honest, the speed at which these guys serve you food, I don't know what they do. Yeah. But maybe something can be done. Yeah. You know, you have people that when you're entering the restaurant, they're kind of doing, you know, and it's just so beautiful to watch, you know. And before you know it, that's this guys actually basically can serve you hot food within 10 minutes. So I don't know what to do. So if, you're uh, very correct, but if you look at my customer base. Yeah. Between five to seven, that's when they come in their numbers. <laughs> From morning to about five, nobody is there. Just one, two, you serve them, they praise you. Mm. They give you all sorts of good things. Mm. But from five to seven, when they have close work, maybe they want to eat. What we usually do at times, we have cola, so we roast the chicken and cake. But naturally, it's not too good. Chicken should be served fresh. I notice that we do that, the one right under, maybe before you could self arrange them, maybe. The taste may not be like mm -hmm. others, and they will complain, oh, 48. It's not like 48. So at times, even if they are disgruntled or mm -hmm. they are angry, when they exercise patience and they serve their chicken that is like the 48 they like, mm -hmm. they will always give me an applause. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing about the location? So because even though, yeah, I know you, you're not giving numbers, which is kind of like you're doing like a door to door service. Yeah. So, but sometimes, you know, people just want to go out of the house. Yeah. It's kind of like you just want to go and sit somewhere. You see, and another thing that Another complaint that I see online is like uh, when we go there, sometimes we're not very comfortable because of the side. Yeah, because of the side. That's the best. That's one of the questions that I've been eager to answer. Okay. <laughs> In business, you should have your objective. Okay. Mine is African kitchen. Mm. I don't need to be structured. Mm. And there's one thing about my location that makes me feel comfortable. Mm. I won't go to Moliko. It's too chopped up. You know, before coming to Fort, it's something special. But why should I drive past my 17? University Junction, Moliku, checkpoint. 
Chisi bought. Pino Baker Bonuma. Then you come into that care. That's his place. Beauty is strangeness. So when you take all that move, you come there. And then the way my guests talk to you at times. Wow. Some people even come there refuse to eat. I had one bush roller three days ago. No, I can't eat here. And she sat there as people were, kept on coming in their numbers. And when we were eating with life and joy, she tested it and said, Oh my God, I need a six plate. Wow. But I told her sincerely that they will not serve me. She said, Why? I said, Well, you came and said you're not going to eat here. Now you want to eat, you have to pay a fine. How much? Mm. As you have to give a credit, you get four credits. <laughs> Ironically, she told me that your food is the best. Okay. I've never eaten chicken like this. She gave us a lot of praises. Mm. So you see, at times, what kills human beings is their mentality. Mm. And when she moved around, she saw the way things are being done. She said, wow, is this how clean 48 spices is? I little did I know that the environment, the girls, all their knees were shaped, ears, nice health. Looking for cooking, the other cup. In short, she was so amazed, and she asked me that we should take a photo. Mm -hmm. So when I took photo, I just smiled, bitch. I said, "Wow, amazing!" <laughs> she would take it that way. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> no, but when you're saying that, right? When you're talking about kind of like trying to model the traditional kind of kitchen, I also see there's a lot of people that come to put eight spices always eat with their hands. Is that something that you do? Is that is that kind of like? Is it like, uh, is it composing? Like, must it give your hands? <laughs> or it's just like people who want to feel the day? It's the same thing that somebody asked me when I went to Bermuda. Mm -hmm. That is surprising to see somebody to eat at you with a spoon. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. For it is a traditional kitchen, but it's different. If you look at the seats, they're very expensive in the table. That's what the complaint you do me. Mm -hmm. That I spend money to buy luxurious seats and all the likes, but I don't want to change the structure. With four TVs, Smart TVs. How many places are the charger for more than 100? Mama, what do they expect in mm -hmm. Food is not all about the house. It's all about the quality and the hygiene. Why should I be a fabulous structured when the quality is not there? It's like to give a pick a white dress. <laughs> What's the outcome? So with 48, we always think about our customer safety. Our toilets are extremely clean. Our environment are clean. The seats are beautiful. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. Keep up the great job. You know. Thank you. Yeah, but now I must ask. So right, yeah. you know, I read all this online, eh? know. and you know, I'm I'm just kind of like bringing you what the customers are saying. So some yes. customers are like, "Why are you not in Duala? Why oh are you like?" Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Those in Duala they also want to have a taste of potty spices. You have said it all along. Like, last week that was in Duala, I did one location. Mm -hmm. Like uh, cater for one location, then they had one wedding, they called the barbecue section. We did pork, we did chicken, we did fish, we did everything, even good. Mm. It was so sweet until they asked us one number we gave. But the truth is, expansion has its own difficulties. You understand? Mm. You should first of all have a site and a good mastery and the workers I want to expand with. Mm. Some of the workers are temporary. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. <laughs> like most pastors do, they'll preach about what? They'll preach about what that you know. Girls <laughs> want to get married. I see this and that. They want to travel. Fort Ed need to expand. We have been to here, we have been to here. We all have the clientele in these areas, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, it's a matter of time. Just give two years. Fort Ed will be at Bonamosadi. Mm. And you see. And from Bonamosadi, Fort Ed will move to Yahweh. <laughs> It's a plan. Yes, yes. Just two years from now, we realize our goal. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, more with Mr. Atem George after the break. <laughs> If you are just joining us today on the Sherma Show, we've been in the presence of Mr. Atem George, the CEO and founder of 48 Spices Kitchen Joint. Please, you really need to go to that joint and yeah, talk about sure. all about it. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Atem, yes. I just want to, for us to end some part of the interview, 
there are just some few things that I want to ask you. So yeah. who can you actually praise for this wonderful skills that you've developed? Wow. Your business? <laughs> yeah, honestly, you know, to me, <laughs> the way you talk about your business and the way you present your business, it seems like a call. You know, when, when someone is called to be a priest or when someone is called to be a pastor, <laughs> so that, that's the way it feels, honestly, talking to you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sincerely, I should go with that too. The first thing is, I was very close to my mom. Yeah. We do everything together. Can you imagine they did not even call me mommy's son? Okay. They used to call me mommy's daughter. <laughs> the way I ground my garlic and ginger mm-hmm. when we are cooking together. Yeah. So I was inspired from my mother. The inspiration comes from my mother. Yeah. Mommy Julie, she has been so, so, so like. Ironically, let me unveil 48 to you. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Kati Kati, I prepare more than any other person. When it comes to AY, I prefer one of my person. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Mule, talk less of classic fried rice. Right? <laughs> so you see, it's not all about this grill aspect. Yeah. Even the cooking aspect, I'm very good. I've catered for many occasions in Limbe. We don't need to advertise. They know, the company know themselves that I've come for my services. Wow. And behold, they told me that I'm the best. Yeah. I should continue in that department. But it's not good because it's very demanding. <laughs> I cannot be doing that. I'm doing chicken, I'm doing fish. I'm... So it was so cumbersome for me. So I paused it. But when you require my services, I will give it to you. So the source of my inspiration is from my mother. Oh, mommy. I used to be mommy's daughter, not son. <laughs> mommy, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Adel. It's You're really welcome. Pleasure. Please don't go. We still have some fun. <laughs> we have some questions for you. Right. But this is actually like more than nothing. So please, you just take one. Any? Yeah. You read it? Yeah. And let's see if we can answer three. Let me unveil the first. Yes, please. The first question goes thus. What was your favorite meal as a kid and why? Oh, tea date is rice and chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. Tea date is a rice and uh, Chicken. Oh, can you imagine the variety that we have in Cameroon? When I was when I was a kid, you know, rice was being eaten on an Xmas yeah. day, and the type of rice that we being imported, I don't know what's happening today, was so special. Mm. When you eat it, you realize smiles on your faces of all the children that must have taken part in that. You realize that everybody's just smiling for nothing. <laughs> then rice was something that was so special. We attach or for us, those are days when we keep. We think that if you have wealth or money, you must have rice in your home. Oh. That you can prepare rice ordinary day other than Xmas. Mm. For us, we add rice only on Christmas Day. Then the second question goes thus. What is the best gift you have ever received? Mm. Oh, it touched my heart. Oh. A cell phone. Oh. Three years back. S20, S10, sorry, it's not S20, from a customer wow. that I served. That customer came and asked, what's your name? I told him I didn't left. Three days later, he came and handed that phone. Oh, that's amazing. I was like, hey, what for? I don't need this. Then I had my funny phone <laughs> that we call Chobonko. <laughs> he told me that, why I'm giving you this phone? You need to advertise what you're doing. Wow. You're just so nice. What makes me feel happy with you is your humility mm. and the quality of your phone. Please have this. Ah, amazing! What luxurious goods are you fond of buying and why? Mm. Mama, you cannot, you cannot imagine. Mm. It's my chicken, my pork, my goods. For this luxurious. Because that's what makes me happy. That's what gives me money. Mm. When I go to the market to buy my fowls, mm. you need to see those buy and sell them. The way I entertain them. So it makes me happy. For me, it's luxurious because that's what gives me money. Wow. That's what keeps me in business. That's what makes me happy. I'm not thinking to have a cow. No. It will remove me from what? My business or be division. You know, car means attraction. So I'm not there. It's my goods, my pig, my fowls, or the fish. <laughs> it makes me different. So, Mr. Atem, I know after this conversation, people will be wondering, like, where can I get this 48 spices, right? So, please, how can people get to you and how can people get their orders delivered to them? Yeah, it's good that they have the numbers of the company. Mm. 
Gotcha. They can begin by 672 66 8348. That is 672 66 8348. They can still, they can equally place the order on 699 441529. Okay. That's 699 441529. Okay. But there are other numbers. Yeah. So, to that, with that, it will ease everything that we have yes. discussed about. I think so. And I'll be very pleased to receive calls from them and make things palatable mm -hmm. for us. Can you also tell people where you're located in Boya? That's a very good question. Yeah. We are popular, no doubt. But even at my seven, you ask any taxman, take me to 48 spots. Former GC board summit. Okay. The former GC board. Okay. Wherever you are, or you take the goalie map, you okay. check it's there. For the spice, other true back or for my selective, it will lead you there. Oh, wow. Mr. Atten George, it's been a pleasure having you here on our platform. Thank you so much and keep doing what you're doing. On today's edition of the Sherma Show, we were honored to be in the presence of Mr. Atten George, the CEO and founder of. 48 Spices Kitchen Joint. Please visit that joint. I tell you, you will not regret it. But please, thank you so much for being with us here. Remember, we are here because you're there. Do not forget to subscribe to all our social media handles with the name The Shelma Show. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye. <music>